It's my pleasure to talk to Alex Moore from the Heaven Store Distillery here in Louisville, Kentucky. Alex, you are um, the blender of the distillery. How, how did you get into that job? I'm very proud to be the blender. Thank you for having me, awesome. Um, so my first job uh, at a university was in the military where I got to travel the world and became infatuated in production processes all over the world and uh, specifically in alcohol. Worked with different distilled spirits as well as wines and beers. When I came back to the state side, I wound up at Breckenridge Distillery under uh, master distiller and blender Jordan Vi, who also had a strong wine background. Mm. Um, and because he was constantly the sales on the sales side, uh, he started trusting me a little bit more on the blending side. We were a small operation and everybody wore many hats. And uh, Jordan wound up, Jordan and I wound up making a few blends together that did exceptionally well. And, and my interest uh, there was, was really everything for me. So uh, the creativeness and, and the ability to, to work within the confines of the regulations mm -hmm. and uh, I was fascinated by it. So I continued down that road. So your responsibility is to keep uh, the, the, the core range uh, consistent? and to try out new things. So when you have bourbon casks and you blend them, what's the difference between the cask and what can you achieve by, by blending them? There's a dramatic difference between the cask. Uh, many people think it comes down to the mash, uh, mm. the mash being the recipe and the ingredients that went into it. Though that has a large part that the cask itself and where it ages, not just what region, whether it's Kentucky or Tennessee or New York or Vermont, but also within the warehouse where it's sitting, um, how it's rotated, how the seasons have affected it. Yes. I mean, you will have casks within 20 feet of each other that taste completely different that are coming off of the same ferment, the same distillation. Mm. So uh, a lot of my job is working to ensure that we're monitoring and paying attention to those different effects and then taking that into it into account when we're doing the blending so as much as i want to say i'm just tasting whiskey all day there's also a lot of administrative work on the back end that is uh, managing mm. where things are aging and and understanding the effect that has on the screen and uh, what about batch sizes for for heaven store how, how many casts do you use for a batch so I would say that is, we don't have a set number. Mm. Uh, we have done uh, limited releases, or, or even in our core offering at one point, we tried to limit it to just 10 barrels. Um, and then, of course, we have our single barrel program, which is extremely popular. Uh, we found that maintaining consistency with batch sizes as small as 10 is, is really just a little too difficult. And uh, though you wind up with a terrific product and everything's a little different in every bottle, sometimes your customer is a little disappointed when they mm. have one bottle that they like more than the other. Uh, so we've, we've really changed our focus to over 20 barrels, mm. uh, and 20 to 40 barrels. You talked about the regulations in, in the bourbon industry which I think are much more tough than in the scotch whiskey industry. So <clears throat> how do you proceed if you want to experiment to find new things? What, what are your main, well, tools for that? So uh, I'm not incredibly familiar with the scotch industry. Mm. So as, as far as comparing the two, I, I am not the expert and can't mm. tell you that. But our, um, uh, I guess the the rigidness of our uh, regulatory system here for bourbon make it so that all the blending is really happening outside of the barrel. Mm. Whereas in a lot of industries, you can do a lot of things to affect the taste within the barrel. Mm. I wish I had that type of flexibility because you can really mold the, the spirit within the barrel to an end point. Mm. And for us, it's much more of a game of, of having enough to select from where you can mold it by understanding where to pull in the warehouse. But it also means that some of those barrels are sacrificial. Um, 
So uh, the comparison between Scotch and, and American whiskey, I, I'm not the best resource anymore. I apologize. Uh, talking about the uh, cooperation between you as the blender and the distiller, uh, how, how much do you cooperate? How, how much do you talk in, in this respect? So Ken Pierce, our master distiller, uh, has over four years of experience training under three different master distillers. That's incredibly unique for a master distiller. So often you find somebody who is an apprentice to a master distiller for their entire career. They learn one way of doing things, though that method is very scientific. Um, it limits their creativity uh, and, and really builds a box around that. Ken, having learned under three different master distillers, has seen so much. He's, he's even worked outside of whiskey and in tequila mm -hmm. and in other spirits. And having that type of knowledge makes him my best asset. Um, so in the process, typically it starts with Ken and with marketing, mm -hmm. where I have an idea that maybe I, I learned about from another region around the world or another spirit or maybe even a, a beer or a wine. It's another technique. Then working with the marketing department and the sales department, we wonder, is this technique something that somebody might buy, whether it's good or bad? Because even if it's absolutely delicious in the bottle, you need somebody to mm. take that bottle and open it. So working with them, and then Ken is my sounding board on whether it's scientifically possible or whether in his 40 plus years, he's tried something similarly and already knows the end result. And, and then I can learn from him on that. So typically in the ideation phase, I, I rely on Ken a lot, mm. as well as the other members of the team. In the maturing phase, that's where I really take control. Okay. Um, whether it's seven years of aging or whether we're transferring mm. barrels around or, or uh, switching barrels, in which case the aging process in bourbon stops. However, it becomes a distilled specialty spirit. Maybe we can put it in a wine cask and then work with it that way. Um, and then towards the end, that's when I incorporate my findings with Ken and look for his blessing and, and advice on what could be used to improve it or whether it's, it's done to his satisfaction. Well, Alex, looking forward to many more bottlings from you. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank and you. Pleasure talking to you. Oh, pleasure. Thank you.